Hi, I'm Toby and in this video tutorial series we are going to show you how to go from this to this. So, we've split the video series down into bite-sized chunks. Now, in this first video, we're going to show you what you get in the kit, what you're going to need to source yourself, and how to assemble the sink insert. Now, the sink insert is the part of the mould that forms the bowl of the sink. We're going to show you, using the kit that you receive from us, and the tools and the materials that you're going to source, how to produce an imperfection-free sink insert so that when you come to demolding your sink it's going to be perfectly smooth on the inside and you're going to be able to show it off to all your friends who come around. So let's start with what comes in the kit. When your package arrives from us you are going to be faced with a number of different shapes made from moisture resistant MDF. You're going to have some screws, you're going to have some uh, little blocks, uh, some little glue blocks, and you're going to have uh, a small pack of uh, body filler, which will be more than enough to fill in any gaps in your sink insert. And then finally, we are going to provide you with a small bottle of uh, resin, which will be enough for two coats to go over the top of your assembled sink insert. So, let's have a look at the things that you're going to need to source yourself. We'll start with the cordless drill. Pretty simple. Most households have got them. At a push, you can probably use a manual screwdriver with a Phillips head. You're going to need protective gloves. This is for when you're working with hot glue, which leads me on to glue gun. It's glue gun and glue sticks. You're going to need an orbital sander for sanding the filler and just making sure that your sink insert is nice and smooth. And with that, you're going to need a selection of orbital sanding pads. Now you're going to need pretty standard mix of rough, medium and fine, i.e. 80 grit, 120 grit, 180 and potentially a 240 grit. And finally, you're going to need a roller frame and high density foam roller and a container of some description to put the resin in when you finally come to applying it to your assembled sink insert. So let's clear all of this away and bring the sink insert back in. So when you open your pack, this is what you will receive. You'll have some resin, you'll have some body filler, you'll have some MDF parts, you'll have some screws, and you'll have some blocks. So let's start laying the sink insert parts out so you can begin to get an idea of what you'll be building. So these are the parts laid out, which is effectively how you're going to be assembling. And I'm hoping that you can see, or beginning to get a picture of what we're going to be doing. So we're going to start with the lid, which is this section here, and we're gonna build it upside down and you'll see why in a moment. So if you are enjoying this video, click the like button below uh, to let us know that you're enjoying it. Also, whilst you're down there, click the subscribe button and then click the little bell icon next to it. And that means that every time we upload a video, you'll be notified.
Now this is the point at which you're going to need your glue gun. I suggest you put your gloves on as well because hot glue by its very name does get very hot and you do not want that getting on your skin. Move the screws over here. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use these blocks just to start building up the corners. Now these blocks are about 15 millimeters thick and that will give the base of the sink just enough fall for the water to drain away once your sink is operational. Now they won't quite fit perfectly, but don't worry about that. Just make sure the corners are together. And that should be good enough. There's a millimeter gap here and there. Try and equalize those. But like I say, don't worry too much because we can deal with that afterwards when we're filling and sanding. Let's drop that disc in there. We'll put the second one aside for the moment. Now it's useful just to, with the hot glue, just do a little dab to stop it from moving. And what we're going to do now is take these blocks and just start applying them in regular spacing over the joints between the MDF shapes. We don't want to get too close to the edge because we don't want to foul the sides when we come to stick those on. And there we have it. The lid is now assembled. Now we're going to wait a couple of minutes just to let the glue harden up and then we're going to flip it over and we're going to have a look at assembling the sides. So the glue is now being left for a couple of minutes and it has hardened up so we can flip the insert over and work on the other side. Now on this insert, which is a, one of our prototypes, there's a little defect here but we're not going to worry about that because we can fill that with body filler and we can sand it out afterwards. So now we're going to move on to the sides of our insert and we're going to see how they stick together. So two short sides and the two long sides. So Good way to start. So again, just a little dab of glue. Hot glue is very useful. It will sand. And it just allows you to pin everything in place to start with. Otherwise, everything will fall over like it just did a minute ago. So just pin those top bits together. Make sure you get everything the right way round. Yeah, I think we've pretty much nailed that. Let's just check that the lid fits. Yep. Like I said before, there, is, there will be the odd gap. That's what the body filler is for. And we can sand out any imperfections. So, again, move that to one side. And we're going to use the remainder of the blocks just to reinforce this insert so you can just quickly run some glue there along the seam oops and that's why you wear gloves 
put that in and glue that in place. Now remember to not go too close to the top of the insert because you'll foul the lid when it when it comes to putting that on. So again, nice blob of glue down there. Push that edge together. Two sides of your block and just poke that in the corner. So you're gonna flip it round. I'm gonna do the other side. Keep your eye on the seams on the edges as you go, just to make sure that they're they're joining nicely. It's not a big deal, but it just makes things easier for you in the long run. And there we go, base assembled. Now it won't quite have its strength yet, not until the lid is on. As you can see, there's a little bit of wiggle there. As long as you're fairly careful with it, then it should be pretty easy to assemble the lid or get that in place. So what we're going to do is glue the insert top in, just pin it temporarily, and then we're going to flip it over and we're going to use the remainder of the blocks around the perimeter to make sure that, the, that this lid stays in place. Again, just the old blob. And we're now ready to put the lid on. Now try and make sure that it's central all the way around. And I'll just try and make things as accurate as possible. The glue is quite forgiving stuff. You can actually scrape it off when it's cooled, but it will also sand off. So now we've got the lid on, what we need to do is reinforce it. I'm still going to use my blocks on the edges. Just until we get all the reinforcement in place. I'm not sure whether you can see this, but what I'm going to do is down all those seams and put glue blocks around the edge. I'm also going to put glue in all the joints just to make sure it's nice and firm. As you can see, I'm going around all the joints and just filling them in. And then I'm going to flip it over and do that on the other side as well. Okay. So that's done. And we're just going to run glue down these edges. Try and really squeeze it into the into the joints. Now use one of the spare blocks just to scrape the excess off. We're going to leave that a couple of minutes now for that glue to dry. And then we can go on to the next stage.
Okay, so we've left the insert for about 10 minutes now just to let the hot glue cool down. And we're gonna give it a quick sand just to get rid of the excess glue. So we can then move on and start applying the body filler. So I'm gonna use the roughest grit, which is the 80 grit. I'm gonna make a bit of noise now, but hopefully you'll be able to see how easily the glue comes off. Turn that down onto a slow speed. So as you can see, the glue's coming off really easily. And just remaining in the gaps. So one thing I forgot to add is that because you are sanding MDF, you should have some form of dust extraction and failing that you should definitely have a mask. So what I'm doing here now, now that I've taken the glue off, is I'm going to start, I've started to work on the edges, getting rid of the glue, but also just making sure that the edges line up with the sides. Some of these gaps will be too big to sand back and these are the edges that we're going to put more body filler in and then sand that back. So just concentrate on the, the edges like that one where we can take that back in line with the side and then also that line there just to make sure that that edge is nicely smoothed off. Change the pad as necessary because they will clog up with the glue. Now one thing I want to point out is that the orbital sanding, sanding pads that I'm using are actually a mesh so that with the dust extraction it actually sucks up through the mesh and into the hoover which is far more efficient and I can highly recommend this. Now moving on to the next stage now that I've taken or shaped all those sides so that they're nice and level with each other I'm just going to take the sharp edges off around the perimeter just so that we get a nice uh, rounded edge and that will help later on when we come to take this insert out of the outer mold. So I'm just going to run, just make a, a small round on those edges. most of the edges done in fact that's all of the edges done there's a little bit of excess 
around the top here which I'll take off shortly but we're pretty much ready to start putting body filler in all the fine finer gaps now um, that will go off very quickly so we'll be sanding that very soon as well so now that we've sanded all the edges we've taken off most of the excess glue we're ready to start putting on the filler but before we do that we want a nice clean surface to work with so we're just going to give all the edges a quick hoover down it's a good idea to give your work area a quick hoover down as well just so there's not too much dust So hoover off, taking care to work into all those joints and get all that dust out. So now that everything is nicely hoovered off and it's a nice clean insert then we can start looking at the filler. Now you will receive as part of the kit a two-part multi-purpose body filler. Along with that you're going to need a piece of scrap wood, a screwdriver and something to mix the body filler with. Now when we take the lid off inside you'll have a small pouch of hardener, a spreader for spreading the filler and squeezing it into all of the gaps and the tub itself. So very simple use your screwdriver to prise the lid open or off almost there There we go. And that's what the filler looks like on the inside. It's got a liquid top on it. So again, uh, using your screwdriver, give it a quick mix so that all the constituents are blended. And note that I'm still wearing my gloves at this point. You don't want to get the filler on your hands because it is quite difficult to get off. So we'll put that to one side. So the quantities are very simple. Roughly, very roughly, a golf ball. golf balls worth of the filler and to that just twist the top off that very roughly we're going to add a pea so it's a golf ball to a pea make sure you get them the right way around put that to one side and we're going to start working the pea into the golf ball Now you get about five to 10 minutes out of body filler. And that's why we don't mix up too much in one go. And it will be very obvious when it starts to go off because it kind of gels and you can't squeeze it into the gaps as easily. Now, as you can see, the, the pea has disappeared into the filler. Get as much of the filler off your tools as possible because once it goes hard it will need to be sanded off any tools. Certainly once it's activated. So now we're going to take our scraper and 
just going to start working it into those gaps. Now it's pretty forgiving stuff, this filler. But just bear in mind, whatever you put on and leave on will have to be sanded off. So if you can be accurate at this point and take as much of the excess off as possible, then you're going to make your life easier in the long run. There's plenty of filler in the tub, so don't worry about getting everything done on the first pass. Just try and be relatively neat. As you can see, that's why it doesn't matter about that gap there. Like I say, don't worry about getting absolutely perfect at this point. Just think more about getting it on and getting it neat. Now, if you are enjoying this video and if you are intending to watch the entire tutorial series, then firstly, please, can you click the like button below? That lets us know if we're doing the right thing, producing these videos. And secondly, uh, please click the subscribe button and then also click the little bell icon next to it because that will let you know when we upload the next tutorial video in the series or indeed any other future series that we will produce and we plan on producing quite a few. So we've been going at this a couple of minutes now. I'm expecting this filler to start flashing off soon or setting a little bit of life left in it i think i'm on borrowed time here that's why i've done the big gaps first because the little ones are very quick to do You'll know when it begins to seize up because it almost tears when you're spreading it and then it becomes grainy, which is the point at which you need to stop playing with it because then you're kind of going backwards. You're taking away the smooth edge. So I've made that a little bit grainy there now. So squish scrape that off so yeah first pass done i'm going to get rid of the excess filler and just leave that to dry for half an hour and then we can come back sand this off and then go at it again with another pass and really look at getting the final shape done ready for applying the resin so we've left it about half an hour now the filler is hard enough to start sanding it ready for us to put the second and final coat of filler on the edges just so that we can get it absolutely perfect before we apply the final resin coat so again we're going to use our orbital sander i'm going to use 120 sanding pads now just to take the excess off i don't think i'm going to be doing a lot of sanding just take it off and just expose the little bits and the edges and uh, then we'll be ready for coat two.
on that edge there, and I will do the same on that one. As you can see, already can, I'm not entirely sure. You can see I've gone for quite a big round there. That's just where the two meet. Um, there's two reasons for that. A, it's because the two bits meet like that, and it's very difficult to get them to, to, to butt up perfectly. If they did butt up perfectly, then you're not getting this insert out of the mould in one piece. Now, I'm not promising that you that you will get it out in one piece, but if you've got a nice round on it, then there's far more chance of this coming out in one piece and perhaps you could use it again. So we're going to put that round on most of the edges eventually by the time the whole thing is done. Um, MDF, or this, this moisture resistant MDF is quite soft and forgiving so you're able to do that with decent sanding pads. So I'm going to carry on now and uh, show you the progress as we go. Okay, so that is all of the edges now sanded. It's nice and smooth all the way around. There's not many imperfections really. There's that little defect there that I just need to put a little bit of filler in. That's all fine there. Pretty good all the way around. As you can probably see, I've gone for like a 10 mil radius on all of those edges 10 mil or or higher will make it a lot easier to get out of out of the the, uh, the mold when you finally come to demold your concrete so the next step now is to just do the final final fill i've just noticed there's two little holes there that i've got to fill in um, but other than that i think we're pretty much there any really tiny defects tiny holes will be filled by by the resin when it goes on in two coats um, so we're going to just do the final fill now and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step so just as before we're going to take our filler i'm going to mix up a little bit less this time I'm going to mix up half a golf ball to half a pea. So, don't need anything like as much. There's my half golf ball. Oop, a little bit too much. What happens if you put too much of the the red the P stuff on is that because it's the activator it means that the filler will go off a lot quicker so fortunately there's not actually that much to fill so it won't make too much of a difference but just bear that in mind when you're doing your first part pass if you put too much activator in then you might find it goes off a lot quicker Remember to get as much off your tools as possible. How stupidly I didn't scrape that off before, but I've still got a relatively good edge to work with. Just going to go around and fill in any little gaps that I happen to see. There you go. Now, obviously, the next step will be to sand those bits off. After that, what we're going to do, you pro all those uh, Hawkeyes amongst you have probably noticed there's another disc there. Now, this disc is going to sit on top of there. And the reason for that is that when you have a sink waste, you, it always sits just a little bit deeper within the sink itself so that the water can drain into, into that waste. Obviously, this is the negative of it. So this will create a... Um, a depression in the base of the sink so that the water will, will, will drain to that point. So we'll, we'll, we'll do that next. We'll also need to attach these to the inside as well. Now these two go together and one attaches on the inside 
of, uh, of the mould of the insert there and the other one there. And the reason for that is when you cast your concrete, you're going to need something to grip onto to pull this insert out, especially if you want to reuse it. But obviously we'll get to that later on in the video series. So for now, we're just going to let this filler dry off. It's still got a bit of life in it, so I reckon we've probably got 20 minutes, half an hour. And then we can sand that off and then we can have a think about getting the, uh, getting the resin, first coat of resin onto the insert. Okay. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes now. You can see from the, the little bit that we've left there, the filler has gone completely. So we are now in a position where we can sand the final bits of filler off uh, so that we can get onto the next stage, which is applying the, uh, the resin. So back to the sander, another 120 grit pad. Dust extraction on, and we're just going to take those final bits off. This is ready now to have the, uh, the resin coat applied. Before we do that, however, mustn't forget to apply the disc or uh, attach the disc. I just turned the hot glue gun back on. So we're gonna glue that on and then uh, apply the resin. So glue gun in hand, nice and thin. Get that on, and that's stuck in place straight away. So now we are ready to apply the first coat of resin. So I poured some of the resin out into my container. I'm ready to start rollering it on. However, I just want to put a sacrificial layer underneath. I'm going to use this old bit of plywood. Because this resin will stick uh, very well to any surface that you uh, that you apply it to. So right, we're ready, now ready to go. The resin goes a nice long way. Just get it on really thin. The thinner you get it on, the better the finish is going to be. So I've still got my gloves on. I have actually changed my gloves. So if you've got a, a supply with you, then that's going to be useful. When you apply the first coat, what you're going to notice is that the MDF sucks up quite a bit more than the second coat. But there will be plenty in the container that you receive. It's very easy to tell from the colour of the MDF, where you've applied it and where you haven't. The filler less so, because the body filler doesn't really absorb any of the resin. So that's another good reason to take off as much of the filler as you can, as you can see on the top where that little defect was. You couldn't really tell that there's, there's any resin on there. Let's go around the insert there. And that's done. So coat one done, we'll be back tomorrow morning to put the second coat on. So we've left the insert overnight and the resin has gone off completely. I've just given it a quick sand with a fine sanding pad just to take any dust that's settled in the resin uh, overnight, just to take that out, uh, uh, just to make it nice and smooth. 
Uh, so we're ready now for the second coat, but before we do that, we need to attach the handles to the inside of the, uh, of the sink insert. So we've got something to grab onto um, when we come to demold. Now it's worth, we'll supply you with uh, rectangles of the MDF so they can be attached here and here. Um, it would be worth adding a, a bit of glue there as well just to uh, increase that bond. I'm gonna use mitre bond because it's quick. Um, so I'm gonna glue one bit to the other. Mitre bond is uh, fantastic stuff. It's super glue and an activator. So it goes off really quick. So you apply the super glue to one part uh, to one part and then the activator spray to the, to the other and then I, you just stick them together and within seconds they are extremely well bonded now you just have to be careful that when you do this you get it right first time because once it's stuck it's stuck Again, and apply super glue to the back of the handle inside a quick spray. Hold that in place, and within a couple of seconds, that should be stuck. Now I'm going to screw those in also. Notice how I've set the handle down from the edge, edge there so that when the insert is in the mould it's not sticking up at all. It's not firing the base of the mould. So just do the same on the second handle. Move those together. Spray the activator on there. Again, setting that a little bit lower. And now we've got two handles so that when we come to demolding, we can just yank those and the insert will hopefully pop straight out. So that part done, we are now ready to apply the second coat of resin with a fresh roller. And I've got my resin here ready to go. Now, unlike the first coat, which soaks into the MDF, and this one will go a lot further because the first coat has, has already sealed the MDF, which will stop any more from going in. So this coat will sit on top. And will be shiny when it's, uh, when it's finished. And that, my friends, is it second coat applied we'll let that go off and we are now 
pretty much ready to start thinking about getting on with uh, building the outer mold so that we can cast our sink.